Today we're going to be kicking off a new series of tutorials making looping backgrounds and the first one today has a super rad look to it. I want these to be as easy and approachable as possible so we're going to be doing these all in After Effects using the default layout and using only stock plugins and effects. I'm excited to see what you all make and hopefully this inspires you to push the boundaries, use these in different styles and different looks. So go ahead and open up After Effects and let's jump in. <laughs> All right, so we are in After Effects, and first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here and watching. It means the world that you guys would take the time to do so. I'm excited to see what we create together and um, do something that I thoroughly enjoy, which is making motion backgrounds. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We are um, here looking at a blank default uh, layout here in After Effects, and so let's go ahead and make a new comp. And for the name, we're going to name this Clouds because that's going to be the uh, base of our animation. And we'll go 1920 by 1080. Square pixels is fine. 30 frames per second. You can change these fr this frame rate to fit um, whatever project you need it to. So if you need 2997 or 24 or 23. And then let's go 30 um, seconds on this loop. And let's hit OK. So we have our Clouds comp created. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid. So we'll go up here to layer, new, and solid. And we'll have a black solid, 1920 by 1080. You can always hit make comp size just to make sure. And then uh, let's hit OK. And we'll just do this on, on black. So. so the first thing we're going to do is add an effect here um, to make our uh, base animation. So we can go to noise and fractal noise right here or if you want to in the search bar which is how I usually do it you can just type in fractal and then select that fractal noise uh, plugin and with our layer selected down here our black solid we can go ahead and double click fractal noise to apply it to our uh, to our solid so I'm going to just bump up here a little bit and we're going to make some adjustments this is the default of fractal noise but we're going to make some adjustments to make this thing look a little better. So on our fractal type, we have it at basic. I'm going to switch that to turbulent basic. And then on our soft linear, I'm going to change this to spline. And so we're going to have, you can obviously see the change right here. We're going to have, um, take advantage of these, uh, all these indifferences right here where kind of it goes from black to white. Uh, it's going to be a lot of this gray that's going to help us get a lot of the movement and everything. So we'll start right now with the contrast. I'm going to put this to 60. And on the brightness, I'm going to bump that to just 10. And we'll get kind of a, like I said, we're bringing out the grays here, which um, is going to help us with the movement. So uh, nothing too crazy. You know, we don't want to crank this up and blow out the whites or turn this all down and pull out all the black. So we'll keep it right here at 60 and 10 and the next thing I'm going to do right here is go to the transform I'm going to drop this down and on the scale uh, let's go ahead you can either drop this down or just use the uh, slider right here I'm going to bump this to 200 so we're going to double that size on the scale uh, on the complexity right here we don't need to do anything else on the transform on the complexity uh, this is at six right now I think I'm going to bring this down to five just to soften it up a bit and I'm gonna twirl up my transform now. And I'm gonna drop my sub settings. And in my sub settings, I'm gonna take this influence percentage down to 25%. So we don't want this too defined. Like I said, if you crank this all the way up, you can see as everything sharpens up, um, brings out some more definition on the on the sub lines here. So uh, we're gonna drop that to 25 and we can twirl this up. And to make this move on our evolution, this is how we're going to make this move. You see, if I turn this, we start getting that movement in there. Let's go ahead and start. Make sure our playhead's at zero frames, zero seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the stopwatch on evolution. And I'm going to take my playhead all the way to the end here, to the 30 seconds. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll show you this. So um, if I set this to one, um, we're going to get some very, very slow movement. As you can see, if I scrub along here, it's very slow, which is nice. Um, what's going to be nice about just uh, making the animation happen with this evolution is we can make this as fast or slow as we want. So um, this is with just one. So I think I'm going to put 
push this to maybe like six or seven. Let's go to seven. And I'm going to drop this evolution options down. And we're going to check this little box called cycle evolution. This is uh, what's going to make sure that uh, this movement is looping. So let's cycle that. And basically what that means is it's going to make this last frame the same as this first frame. And everything in between is going to get it back to that point. So um, as you can see, since I set it to seven, it's looking a lot more smooth. So next we're going to pre-compose our layer right here. So how we can do that is by right clicking on the layer and going to pre-compose, or I can go up to layer and all the way down here to pre-compose. But let's go ahead and pre-compose that. And yours may be defaulted to leave all attributes, but we want to bring this to move all attributes to new composition. That makes sure that um, this fractal noise plugin will go inside the composition with this layer. Otherwise it'll sit on top of it and just kind of make things a little wonky. So. Uh, let's go ahead and name this um, main loop and let's hit OK. And so you can see now that we have our clouds in its own composition called main loop and it's still functioning everything right here. So now I want to create a new solid. So I'm going to go to layer, new, solid. And for this solid, I actually want this to be white. And that is because uh, the effect that we're going to put on the solid, it needs it to be white or just kind of a different color maybe, but um, definitely not black or anything like that. So we want it to be bright and white because we're going to break this up a little bit. So I'm going to hit OK and make sure it's the same comp size, hit OK. And so we have our white solid on here. And so the effect we're going to put on this is, um, I'm going to go over to my effects and type in card dance. And you can see it right here. We have card dance with my white solid uh, selected down in my timeline. I'm going to go ahead and double click and apply that. Let's go ahead and name this card dance so we know which layer we're working with here. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my main loop for right now. And so let's really dig into this here now. So we have our rows and columns. We have it set to independent. We're going to keep it like that. And on my rows, I'm going to type in 175. And then on my columns, I'm going to type in 100. So we have our back layer over here set to card dance. We're going to keep that like that. And I'm going to set our gradient layer to main loop. And we're not going to really see anything yet, but we're just kind of setting this up. So we have our main loop and it says gradient layer. If you remember, we go back to our gradient or our main loop. You can start seeing the gradients within here if you kind of start thinking of it like that. So that's exactly what we want because that's going to affect um, how this card dance works. So uh, let's start breaking this up. The first thing I'm going to do is the rotation order. We're going to start with uh, Y, X, Z. On our transformation order, we can keep that at scale, rotate, and position. And on our Z position, this is where we're really going to see this uh, movement start happening. Let's drop down Z position. And I'm going to change this from none to intensity one. We can see our main loop map kind of pull out here. You can see where the grays are, um, where the blacks are. If I pop back over here, you can see it matches up. So these lighter areas and these darker areas, if you look at that, you can see those lighter areas, those darker areas, and that's all affecting how this goes. And so if I play this, now you're starting to get that kind of wave um, in that's pulling that animation out that we made in that main loop. So uh, let's go ahead and twirl this Z position up. And the next thing that I'm going to do is twirl down the Z rotation. And so you can see we're playing a lot with this Z plane here, which is kind of front to back. Instead of none, again, let's change this to intensity one. And you can see now it's kind of taking that rotation and turning these into lines here. Uh, and it gives us more definition to our loop. If I, if I kind of cycle back and forth between these two, you can see it is matching up pretty well here. So on our multiplier here i'm gonna hit this on zero and kind of lose some of those darker areas here and on our offset let's set this to 100 and now you can see we've offset a lot of that gray and it's turned this more into straight lines which is a pretty cool look on its own and that's kind of what we're basing a lot of this off of here so i think i want to looking at it now i want to come back up to z position here and i'm going to change this multiplier to two just to bring it out a little more, kind of those grayer areas, um, I want a bit more definition than what we had when it was just at one. You can kind of see the differences here. So if I hit two, 
Um, we're kind of pulling it back, bringing out those um, kind of those humps a little bit more. And on the offset, let's change this to four, um, maybe five, five and a half. Let's go five and a half and just kind of bring that close to the screen. So um, we are kind of offsetting that Z position and we're bringing it closer to our camera, if you will. So it's a pretty cool look. We're obviously going to make this a lot more defined and smooth it out a bit, but even on its own, I really like this. So let's go ahead and stylize this now. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. So we can do that with right-clicking new adjustment layer, or I can go up here to layer new adjustment layer. Either way is fine. And I'm just gonna name this FX. Um, always make sure you're ordering your layers correctly, naming them and uh, stacking your effects properly as well. So the first effect we're gonna add here um, on this effects layer is a Gaussian blur. So let's go over here, we're gonna delete card and just type in G-A-U and that usually brings up Gaussian blur and there it is. So with our effects layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and double click that and apply it. And so all we're gonna do here, I'm gonna turn this blurriness to 25. And so you can already see it's kind of smoothed out if I turn this off. You can see these jagged lines right here from the cards. If I turn that back on, it's kind of smoothing that out and that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna twirl up that Gaussian blur. The next effect we're gonna put on here is called a simple choker. And so I'm just gonna type in simple. And same thing, it's right here under matte and effects layer selected. I'm gonna double click, simple choker. So we're gonna put that on there. And we want the final output here. Let's keep that selected. And I'm gonna bump this up to maybe one, uh, maybe 1.05. Let's go 1.05 on that. And you can see it's kind of choked a lot of those highlights now. And we're just getting these uh, nice specular highlights right along the edges here and these really deep uh, blacks in the shadows. So this is looking really nice too. I like that look. It's kind of got that metallic-y um, blobby look to it, but Let's keep going with this, really push the style here. So I'm gonna go ahead and twirl up Simple Choker. The next thing we're gonna do is bring some levels because you can't do a project without levels, right? So let's go ahead and double click the levels, make sure our effects layer is selected as usual. And on the levels here, we're gonna keep, um, we're gonna keep our black and white the same, but here on the gamma, I'm gonna drop this down to 0.5, kind of crush those blacks a little bit more. And that's really all we're going to use this levels for. We just kind of wanted to deepen those, uh, deepen those blacks again. So we're going to keep that there. And then our next effect, let's come back over and go to tint. And it's right here under color correction. I'm going to go ahead and double click tint. And here's where we're going to bring some color into it. So let's go ahead and find a nice green here. I think we'll lean a little bit more towards the greenish blue. Maybe a little darker here. Kind of like that. It's almost a minty green. And then on our white, let's try to pull in just some more, some more of this like seafoam green. Yeah, something like that. Obviously you can do whatever colors you want, you know, change this to, change this to orange or blue or pink, whatever you want. So uh, that's all up to you and the project that you want to do. So even still, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and twirl up this tint. I'm just gonna play through this so we can kind of see. Yeah, it's looking good. You see a lot of the definition here. Obviously this is on quarter if I bump to full. It's looking pretty good. I like, I like how these threads are coming through, everything like that, how everything is getting highlighted. But still wanna keep pushing this. So our next effect here, we're gonna keep stacking. Let's go over here and just pop on it below. Make sure our effects layer is selected, double click. There's not really much of a glow happening here, just more of like a, a vibrant boost in color. So we're gonna make some adjustments. Biggest one here is the glow radius. So right now it's 10. I'm actually gonna put this all the way up to about 110. And you can already see kind of softens up these lines, brings that glow out. I'm um, looking really good here. I like that a lot. On our intensity, we're at one. Let's put that to about 1.5. Uh, maybe 1.6. Yeah, just kind of brighten these up a bit, give it a nice intense glow. And that's really all we need to do on um, our glow here. We'll bring that out a little bit more as we 
add a couple more effects, but this is looking pretty good. So let's twirl up our glow. We're gonna add two more effects. The first one is a curves, and just like levels, we can't do anything without curves. So double click, and let's go ahead and drop this down, maybe to about there, really, really deepen it a little more. And then I think I wanna grab an anchor point right about here. Yeah, let's drop that down. I like how that's look. It's getting really vibrant. That glow is popping out a little more. And I think I want to come back up more towards that, towards that center line. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, right about there. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and twirl that up. And then our last effect that we're going to add on this adjustment layer here is another blur. And just to kind of give it a bit more glow, like I said, we're going to pull that glow out a little more. So I'm going to go over here and type in cross blur. And you can see this right here, CC cross blur. Let's double click on that. And so I'm not going to really worry about the X radius here. I'm going to be more concerned with the Y. And so let's go ahead and put in 50 on that value. Let's go to 100, kind of pump that up just a little bit. As you can see, it's softened those glows, give us a nice kind of glare um, coming off of there. And I also, I'm going to go up to my levels again. Let's twirl that down uh, where we had that stack before. We had our gamma at 0.5. Let's actually bump that to 0.75, mm, 0.65. Yeah, there we go. And just really bring out those glows, kind of keeping that green, but also bringing out those glows here where that, uh, where those specular highlights are. So I like how this is looking so far. And so one more effect I want to add here, now that I'm looking at this, maybe to bring out a little more vibrancy in these colors, um, is actual plugin called Vibrance. And so let's go over here and type in Vibrance to our effects. And uh, let's go ahead and double click on, a f on that. And let's go ahead and double click on that effect to apply it to our layer. But let's bump these both up to 50. So Vibrance and Saturation, I'm going to put Vibrance to 50 and our Saturation to 50. Kind of bringing that green again. So if I turn this off, you can see it's kind of a muted green, which has a cool look to it. It's almost that kind of x-ray look, but I just wanted to bring in a little more color here. So, And you can color this any way you want. You can add some, uh, maybe a gradient overlay or uh, use some color offset. There's a lot of cool things to do now that we have all these highlights and these shadows and the main color here, but I like how this is looking. I'm gonna go ahead and twirl my vibrance. So now that we have this look kind of looping out, I like you can see all the brights coming out as it goes. Um, this is a full loop and everything. Uh, one more thing I wanna do here, it's really bright on these corners, which is fine. I mean, this is all personal preference. I like to just put a little vignette right around here. And so let's go ahead and put in one more adjustment layer. Again, so we know what to turn off and turn on. I'm gonna rename this to vignette. And let's go over to our effects and type that in again. And we have the CC vignette. Double click, make sure our vignette layer is selected and not our FX. And let's just bump the amount up to 150. I may bump the angle of view down to 30 just to bring some of this brightness out in the corner still, but you can see if I turn it off, turn it back on, it's just softened those ever so slightly, but just kind of brings the attention more to the center again. So let me go ahead and play through that. I have it on full again. So let me switch that back to quarter. Yeah, that's looking good. Well, all right, guys, like I said, thank you so much for sticking with me and watching this first tutorial of many. Um, I'm excited to keep going through these loops with you guys and just learning how we can create some cool looping motion backgrounds. I'd love to see what you all make. So if you want to, hop over on my Instagram, at Timmy Dwyer, and you can tag me in that. You can hashtag Timmy Dwyer, and I would love to see what you guys make with these loops. I hope you find this useful. I hope they fit into your project. I hope that this inspires you to keep pushing forward and creating something really, really cool. I will see you on the next tutorial. You guys have the best day.